Hello and welcome to another episode of Having a Chat. My name is Tommy Kasher and today I'm joined by Kim Green and we'll be talking to Laura Sherian from the Sunshine Coast Lightning. As has happened in the past couple of weeks, I'm joined by both my guests off the top of the show, Kim Green, Laura Sherry, and ladies, thank you so much for joining me. Kim, I'll go to you first, mate. How are you? How's life? Good. Thank- yeah, life is busy. Um, I mean, I'm not certain what mat leave was. I think I probably came back a little early with things that I'm doing, but um, yeah, for me, obviously life's changed quite a bit have little Lennon with me now and I'm heading into the coaching space so I'm coaching a Premier League team which um, my first manager Jan Troy of the Swifts um, pretty much cornered me into doing so here I am I'm a coach now isn't that fun is it everything you expected it to be I've got the best team can I tell you like it is a like my team is so good and um, they're just beautiful players so they make my job very easy Lovely. Now, Kim, we are lucky enough to be joined by none other than Sunshine Coast Lightning speed star, Laura Sherian. Shares, mate, you're joining us from a car. Thank you so much for making the time. Um, now, you girls <laughs> you girls had a win on the weekend, 59 over the Thunderbirds, 58. What did you make of the game? Far out. It was a close game and it was close the whole time. Look, we've been watching Thunderbirds play throughout the year so far and they've just been growing and that's been happening over the last couple of years they've been building these combinations and we knew it was going to be a tough game and it certainly was but it really feels good winning by one as well so um to be able to pull through on those you know tight and close games feels really good as a group and Chez for me I um it's always interesting to hear the tactics around um what a team does going into a team like a Thunderbirds they haven't really had too much success you know that their back is against the wall they need a win What was the tactics going into the game? Yeah, definitely. We actually said that, like, teams that haven't won a game, they've got nothing to lose. They're going out hard. And um, they're quite hard to kind of prepare for because they have so many different combinations as well that they can put out. So me personally, you know, I was thinking of three to four different wing defences that they could throw on me as an individual. Um, But throughout the game, we said, you know, we need to be consistent across the four quarters and keep our error rate low. Um, and particularly, you know, settle on our feeds into the shooters, which it took us a lot to do that throughout the game. I thought um, that wasn't something that we did well. Now, do you think your feeds into the circle was because of uh, how well Shamira Sterling played, or was that just you and the other girls in the attack and not feeding as best as you could? Um, I think, you know, yeah, kudos to them. They played a really great game. And the defenders for their team were also awesome in attack, bringing the ball out and carried a lot of their ball. Um, But for us, in terms of feeding, I just felt like our connection was slightly off and our timing from when we were hitting the circle edge um, to finding the shooters. And we needed to be a bit more creative in um, opening up the space for them and and creating that movement for our shooters in the circle as midcourt. And Shez, you've got a new partner in crime in that midcourt now that Laura Langman has retired. Um, Mahalia Cassidy, an absolute superstar on the rise. How are you finding your combination with her in that midcourt? I am loving playing with Harles, to be honest. She is one cool cucumber. She just, um, you know, she she just looks for the space and waits for the movement to happen and then injects herself into the game in attack. Um, she also comes up with a lot of ball defensively and I'm really enjoying building that combination with her. I, um, through some of my younger years, her very younger years, <laughs> she's quite a bit younger than me, um, I played a bit um, sort of in A&L and that sort of thing with her. Um, so I knew a little bit about how she played and obviously played against her, but she's so smart to play with um, and I really appreciate her timing as a centre. She has someone else that got a lot of ball defensively was Pums Mawaini. Not surprising, but I mean, six intercepts, six deflections, like she was huge. How important has her, I guess, connection with Carla uh, been in, in the defensive circle gaining ball for you attackers? Yeah, Pums is massive for us. I think in the first half in that game, she really kept us in it. Um by turning over ball and giving us more opportunity down the attack end. And I think we would have really struggled without her. Um, going to the game last week, she said, I'm going to get 
five intercepts and she came one short. So I, she went one better this week. So good on Pumza. Um, but she's such a strength for us down that that end. And I think she really um, is also great for team morale. Like she is an awesome team person and contributes so much to us. And we're really lucky to have her. And I think just she's my person who builds into the season as well. So she starts off pretty good, but she just gets better as it goes along. So it'll be really cool to see what she does in the back half. And talking about the the back end of the court, you look at a Kate Chimmon, obviously coming from the Adelaide Thunderbirds previously playing against her old team. You saw her go, you know, throughout the season from goalkeeper through to wing defence now. Um, what, I guess, versatility does she bring to the, the team and how did she feel going into the game? Um, yeah, Shimo is awesome. Um, she, when I heard she was coming to our club, I was so excited. Um, she's a really cool person as well as a very versatile player. She works so hard at training, um, and throughout trialing all those three positions, you know, she gets thrown in all three, um, and all our practice matches and everything. And I think it was so exciting to see her come on and play her third position, um, on the SSN court and get ball for us. And obviously again, against her old team everyone wants to do well and it can be a really hard thing to do um and she just came out and killed it and I was really proud and excited for her Shez you are as I mentioned earlier joining us from the car is that still one the uh Ken Mills Toyota car that you and uh Steph would have that I may have seen some sponsored content for is that do you, do you want to give a shout out yeah there's five of us actually that are refereeing the Ken Mills Toyota car um, we're very lucky to have um, an ambassador role with them and um, we do some pretty funny stuff, that's for sure. Uh, yeah, we get out there and do some ads, which are a bit of a laugh, <laughs> Who, but lots of fun. Who's the best on the socials out at the Lightning, do you reckon? We actually, all of us aren't great. We, we pretty much suck. To <laughs> <laughs> Who would be the best? I think... Oh, Shimo's probably the most consistent. I would say she puts out the most content. She loves a good share, so she'll share anything. Um, <laughs> Is that a dig? <laughs> like she'll share no, anything? No, no. If I tag no, her in no, this, will she share this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, she would for sure. If she gets a tag, she'll share. Um, yeah, so anything lightning, she'll share. She'll put it out there. But in terms of coming out with our own content, um, <laughs> That's a real tough one, to be honest. I'll We're give not you. Great. I'll give you what till next strength? week. I'll give you till next week, and you've All got right. to have an answer for us. All right. I'll see what I can come up with. I'm terrible. Shares. I think you're pretty good, actually. Cooking, oh, cooking in the kitchen with shares. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that is a rock solid content machine, right there. I just need to be more consistent with it. I keep putting it out. There. I just. What you need I'm time. <laughs> Um, yeah, I probably need some more time and I need to not eat it before I share it. <laughs> Mate, and how... Ha- um, Shez, oh, sorry. No, you go, Kim. Gonna take over no, here. no, you go. Um, Shez, you're heading into um, next week, Firebirds, um, local derby, always um, claws are out, can I say, as a New South Wales folk that plays derbies. Um, what's the feeling going into this week? Yeah, definitely. There's nothing better than being the Firebirds at home, that's for sure. It's always a really tough competition. Um, the feeling, I think we're mostly excited. Like, we get a home game, which um, obviously being away this week is exciting going into that. We haven't done any prep yet, so we'll head into that tonight. Um, but, you know, the general feeling is excitement. Like, we love playing the Firebirds. It's always a good, tough match. Um, they are obviously got a few different players going on and different combinations in there. And I think they're very difficult to prepare for as well because they're very – you just don't know what you're going to get from them, um, especially in their attack end. They've got so many different players that can pop on um, to mix it up, especially with their shooters. They're obviously very physical defensively, and that's something that we need to get used to um, but yeah, no, we're excited for the match. Did you happen to catch any of the Giants fever game last night, Shez? I did. What a match, hey. <laughs> As someone who's never played a game of netball competitively at the standard yep. that you do, is RAC Arena, I think it's called in Perth, is that one of the hardest away trips in terms of the crowd that they get there? It just seemed like there were uh, so many moments in the game last night where the umpire was 
talking to Courtney Bruce or whoever it might have been, and they genuinely could not hear what the umpire was asking. I actually love that. I think it's awesome. Um, we played our second grand final there in 2018, and um, although the crowd was definitely against us, um, it was still such an exciting crowd to play in front of and, and definitely the most we've ever played in front of. And, I yeah, in terms of not being able to hear the umpire, I reckon that's awesome. The, the louder it is, the better, and it's more exciting for netball. Do you, uh, Shez, obviously, I've played there quite a few times. We've had quite controversial matches over there from the Giants' point of view. Um, we had a, a blood on sock, and we are playing with six players once. Yep. Then there was a timer debacle when the time was enough, but the umpire called time. And then now this one. Do you, I guess I, it, it is quite a, um, a stadium that you go into and it's almost like it's suffocating because it is, everyone is sitting on top of you. Do you feel like that as a player when you're playing? No, to be honest, I don't even think about it. Any of the stadiums I'm in, um, once I'm on the court, I don't even notice that sort of stuff. Obviously, there's been a couple of times where I haven't been able to hear the umpire. And there was one game against, uh, it was against Firebirds. I think it was a semi-final um, or to get into the finals, one or the other. We only won by one or two goals. And I remember I was in centre, standing in the centre circle, about to start the second half. And it was so loud, I couldn't even hear the umpire blow the whistle at that stage so I think it's only like little moments like that where I go holy moly this is crazy in here but I also love it I think even if it isn't for my team it's just so exciting to be a part of it um I haven't been in any matches like that with quite as much controversy as you have um (laughs) which might change my opinion on it (laughs) well yeah See how you go. Maybe we circle back, Tommy, yep. after they've played over in yes. Perth because it is quite loud at the moment. You can hear it through the um, TV that the music is so loud yeah. and then the umpires, yeah. yeah, they're fighting for a voice almost with the mics. So, yeah, yeah it'll be really interesting to see um, once everyone's had a bit of a round over there to see what yeah. everyone's thought about. And kind of what impact that has on the physicality of the game as well, because I think that like just builds up the emotions even more. Absolutely. And she has one last one before we let you go. When I spoke to you last time, you just bought a block of land with your partner, Josh. Have we got a slab down? Where's that at? Give us an update. We haven't got a slab yet. Sunshine Coast Council, we're still waiting for approval. What? Um, (laughs) Shout out. (laughs) Um, but I feel, I'm feeling like it's close. Look, I've picked all my tiles and all that sort of stuff now, which I say I picked them, but I pretty much sat there and got over it after about five <laughs> minutes and Josh picked the rest of it. <laughs> I was just like, yeah, that sounds good. That's fine. Um, but yeah, so the exciting part, once it actually starts building and I've picked my kitchen and that's really all I care about. So. She has his kitchen. That's all that matters. Absolutely. Exactly. <laughs> Mate, Laura Sherian, thank you so much for joining Kim and I on having a chat. Best of luck against the Firebirds, 3 p.m. on Sunday? Saturday. Sunday. Yep. Sunday. 3 p.m. Sunday, yep. mate. Yep. Best of luck. Hopefully we can chat again soon. But Laura, Sher- Laura Sherian, thank you so much for your time. Thanks so much for having me. Shares. Thanks, legend. See ya. Um, Kim, that was lovely of Shez to join us for a chat. How do you make what do you make of the lightning season so far? Yeah, I think they're tracking along nicely. To be honest with you, I thought they were a team that were going to have to find their feet in the first part of um, their season, losing Laura Langman in that centre position. She's such a critical cog to their wheel, and I I really thought that they would take a little bit of time to warm up. But I think the inclusion of Vicky Wilson into their coaching staff has really ignited some fire in that attack end in particular. And you heard Shez talking about um, you know, being a little bit more free on their feeds. And that's probably one thing that when watching the game, you could really see the difference in um, the, I guess, the ability to give the ball when they're on the fly and they're up um, as opposed to under pressure. So I'm sure they'll be looking at that going into the Firebirds game. Were you disappointed for the Thunderbirds that they played so well and got so close to their first win of the season, but then just couldn't hold on? 
Yeah, absolutely. And it's gut wrenching to see any team going through that, especially one that hasn't won it and won a game yet. Um, for mine, it's always a really difficult position to be in as a player when timing is everything, especially with a super shot. You could see their intent in trying to slow the ball down and make sure that um, they secured the win. But with that comes um, more opportunities to stuff it up too. So, and there's been many a times in my career that I've been on that end of it as well, where you're kicking yourself as to why didn't I just, you know, pass the ball in and just hope for the best in the rest. But these are the moments that you train for and for it to go wrong, especially on an offside um, from uh, Matilda Garrett. Like, it's just one of those things that you're just like, as a coach, there's, you can't prepare for that. You can't train for that because that's just, you know, a bit of a, a, a brain explosion from a player. So, yeah, um, a tough one for uh, Thunderbirds for sure. It seems like there a lot of the teams are messing around with the ball more in the circle in the last five minutes than they were last year. Is that an observation that you've noticed as well? Like so many times they'll be in the one point zone, whatever we're calling it, and then they'll feed mm-hmm. it back out to get into the two. Or sometimes the opposite, like Pot Guider didn't want the two and was trying to get back into the one. And it's added another element, I guess. Yeah, it's really interesting because last year I think everyone was trying to find their feet but you also saw scores really blow out last year Mm -hmm. i don't know if it was hub life or if it was the inclusion of the super shot but this year the games are closer um you know you have a look at the last round all four games were so super tight the the swifts versus collingwood was the only one that blew out but realistically only blew out in the last five minutes of the game so um when you're looking at it yeah players are now having to make the decision of far out it's draw like we're drawn at the moment yeah Do we take the two? Do we take the one? Do we keep chipping away? And you can see them actually looking at the coach. Do we go one or do we go two? Like, what are we doing? Um, And I think the difference from last year to this year is the score difference. Is that Teams have become a little bit savvy. Is that something you've noticed on the sidelines with your role um, at Channel 9? Are the players actually looking at the coach asking what the go is? Absolutely. Wow, that's fascinating. Absolutely. So, yeah, and you can see them saying, and I think there's some, some teams have a little um, number that goes up and in that five minutes, whether it's a two or a one, um, what they should be going for. So, yeah, it's quite an interesting strategy because um, at the end of the day, as a player, you're playing and playing and playing. Sometimes you just don't understand where the momentum may be sitting within the game. But when you sit on the sideline, you can see it a little bit better or you can see what the umpires are looking at or you can have a little bit more of a a strategy as to what you're doing. Um, So, yeah, they're going to the coaches quite a bit. Joe Harden did it in the Fever game and I also saw um, Helen Housley do it in the Swifts game. Okay, so let's start with the Vixens Firebirds, the first game of the round. As a Vixen supporter, I am so happy that they got the win. And the debut for Rani Samerson, I mean, she came on and just looked like a seasoned veteran. I know she's played a lot of VNL previously and um, a lot of ANL as well and has, uh, it was 2019 maybe or 18, she won the the ANL Best Player in the Comp or the Shooting Award, something. So she's, you know, been destined to make it at this level for a while. But have you seen a debut like that before? I don't think I have. And especially in the goaling end, to be, to, she's exciting. Like, she's strong, she's tall, she can jump, she's got speed, she's got smarts, she can place a ball. Like, it, the whole package, to be completely honest with you. And I know Liz said it in the commentary, why hasn't she been picked up earlier? And that's my question. Why hasn't she been picked up earlier? Because I, I know she did have a knee injury um, in 2020 and was rehabbing throughout that. Uh, but like to think that they've only just signed her as a training partner this week to get her into the game blows my mind. It, like it actually blows my mind. It is interesting because I mean, while I guess Rani was a training partner previously, then did her knee, then they've opted for Ruby Barkmeyer. Sasha McDonald has been in the in and around the Vixens, you know, shooting end for a while as a training partner. But then I actually found it interesting that Rani leapfrogged. Kalia and Ruby for the starting spot. And then I guess once she, you know, Rani was playing well, they were never going to take her off. But the fact that she leapfrogged both of them for a starting position kind of remind me of a couple of years ago when MJ did her knee and Kim Kamein, now Kim Borger, came in for the last game and leapfrogged, uh, who was it, maybe Sam Gooden and 
someone else and just took the starting spot as well? Mm. Yeah, it's an interesting um, process because as a player, it's all about um, pecking order, right? Uh, not pecking order, but, yeah, you, but know it is, though. you know your yeah. role within the team. Um, so for Kaylee and Ruby, I'm sure they would have questions to ask of um, Simone. Um, uh, maybe not now that they've won that game, but if they lost, there would definitely be some questions asked. But uh, it's well within their right to be asking those questions as to why someone has leapfrogged. But then I, then I question why she wasn't picked ahead of Kaylee Stanton in the first place. Yep. Um, you know, always bring nothing against Kaylee Stanton, but the fact that you had to bring an import, not an import, a domestic import into your team. Yeah. Um, with that comes a lot of other things like housing and making sure that, you know, their well being outside and of the, the game. It's it's a lot of top like it's a big toll. And we know that at Giants when we had a couple of imports um within our team, you, you have to look after them and you have to really make sure that they're really well supported. So I think A the question is um a bit confused as to why she wasn't picked in the first place. But yeah, B how did she jump ahead? Great, great decision by Simone. And at the end of the day, you're a coach and you're based on your performances. And um, if she's made that coaching decision and she's made the right one, to be honest with you, um, uh, like now what? Like that's my question now what? Because I want Rani Samson in my team. Like you got to have her. I would have thought so. I don't know how it's going to work as well because like you said, She's only just been signed as a training partner now. Emily Mannix, I think it was reported that she's going to miss one more game and then come back. So then what do you... Mm. You can't get rid of someone's contract or demote someone given there's no A&L at the moment either. They'd have to be going back to playing V&L. Well, you, you can. Oh, can you? I'm pretty sure you can. Ooh. I think you, within your training partner group, you can bring people up and push pay- people back. And okay. Adelaide Thunderbirds did that a couple of years ago huh. um, where you saw a lot of training partners come in and out of the squad. Right. Don't quote me on it. So not too late. People don't come at me if nah. I'm wrong. Um, Everyone but, at uh, Kim Green if you've got an issue, if it's not true. <laughs> I, I don't read rules, can I tell you? I'm very bad at rules. Yeah, but who does? Um, who but, does? Well, yeah, but I think in this sort of circumstance um, – you know, a contracted player, you're there to do a job, right? Like you sign a contract to do a job. If you're not performing at your job and mm. the team is, you know, at you know, at risk of not making finals and not performing well and it's just like anything, um, any occupation, you have to have a look at how you can transition someone that might be doing a bit better in that role. So um, for mine, I would be looking at, obviously, Rani will get the start next week, I would assume. Um, maybe not, who knows, with um, Simone and what she's doing. But then from there, to be honest with you, Emily Mannix with a fractured knuckle, I would say she's probably out for more than just two weeks. Yeah, um, it didn't sound right. Probably six. Yeah. I wonder if it's one of those things know. then. I, it, yeah. They're just, you know, playing trickery going, yeah, two weeks. And it's, oh, one more week, one more week, one more week. It kind of happens in netball, unfortunately. And I've been on that end too. Where I've just said one week round, you're six. So, right. um, yeah, for mine, I think a broken knuckle, most likely six. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The Kim Green School of Medical Research. <laughs> <laughs> can I tell you? I can tell anyone what's wrong with me. I'm that in tune with my body. Right. It's so funny. Yeah. No, it's funny. I Every time I tore a calf, I'm like, yep, that's, that's the latest where it attaches to the blah, blah. And the physio was like, no, I don't think so. I'm like, no, no, it's a grade two. It's, it's actually, grade two. it's yeah, funny you mention yeah. that because I reckon from an interview, oh, I don't know how many years ago, maybe five, six, seven years ago, I was listening to with Copes. He said at the time, uh, well, were you married then? Or were you just help? Yeah. Okay, yeah. great. He said, my wife, Kim, she's a, a far more elite athlete than I have ever been. So that just, you know, backs that up. Bless him. That's because he has to say that. <laughs> He's a smart man. <laughs> he is a smart man, isn't he? <laughs> um, now, something else just on the Vixens game, I really like the injection of Ali Smith um, when she came on to mm. wing defence. Not that Kate Eddie wasn't playing well, but I think, I don't know whether it's the younger players just have this burst of energy that they're kind of, you know, they've got ants in their pants waiting to get on the court and their Ali's long arms and her quick feet. I thought she, she made a real difference. Yeah, it's really interesting. Um, you know, 
sitting in on um, commentary at the moment, you you know sit there getting your makeup done and looking all glam. And we often talk about some of the players that are coming through. And Ali Smith is one that's often talked about in our change rooms. And um, the thing I love about Ali is she's almost like that traditional Aussie wing defence, like a Renee Hallen and someone that just actually really just um, is solid in keeping her player out of the game. Um, I, I, to be honest with you, I don't know if we've seen that for a while with our wing defences coming through. They've almost gone in a different route where they've got players that are really um, exciting and are powerful and take beautiful intercepts. Um, but with risk, high risk, sometimes, you know, you see a lot of the ball going over the top of them. And then obviously sometimes the ball is flying down the court as well. So, um I really like her. I think she, in the next couple of years, could really put her hand up for a diamonds position if she keeps nail- like not changing her game. Like, just nail what you're doing right now because I think that's what's been missing in that wing defence position for a couple of years now. So do you think that that's junior netballers wanting, not wanting to be a defensive player and everyone wants to play centre and wing attack and get all the glory? Because surely that's coming from the junior pathway stuff, isn't it? Or is it when they get to a an SSN club, everyone's trying to add more strings to their bow? No, I don't think so. I think that, you know, you have a look at the likes of, um, you know, players that have been there previously. That's their strength. Their strength is their speed, their power, their closing speed. Ali's is completely different. She's able to keep the player up the court. She's got beautiful long arms, like you said, so you can't see what you're doing. For me, I always hated playing against a Renee Hallen and the, or Ingalls because she was just suffocating. Like, she was never out of play. She's always got strong hands up. I could never take a deep breath and then go on with my game. Whereas, you know, the likes of the, the Brazzers, the Gabby Simpsons that go for flyers, yes, it was hard to play against them. They're phenomenal athletes. But sometimes it did give you that little moment of, oh, I can have a breather because I can oh, use my body. Right. Okay. To get a contact here or there. Bit cheeky. I was a bit cheeky as a player. <laughs> I'm so glad I'm recording this. I've got that on. Um, I've got that on <laughs> camera and on audio. Have you? How would you have? Just, how would you describe yourself as a player? Um, I would say. Uh, I would say s- smart, but I would also say fiery at the same time. Um, <laughs> yeah. Did you um, intentionally, that- did you go out there to intentionally get under people's skin? Like, is that a tactic that you know if I'm physical with this player, she'll, you know? Um, I knew if I was, yeah, physical with certain players, I knew I could get um, the best out of my game for that. But a Renee Ingalls, you're not doing that against her. She's not falling for that. She's too smart. <laughs> Very disciplined as well, isn't she? Super disciplined. Um, and, yeah, I, th- I think, you know, going into each game, I didn't go into each game going, this is, um, you know, I'm going to just replicate what I do. I'm good at this. Like, every game I changed up what I did. I sometimes never got center passes because I knew a Gabby Simpson was going to kill me on that. So let's get her on, like – the high ball into a second phase, maybe I might get a chance there. Yeah. So yeah, you, you like I was a very honest player to be complete honest with myself and my performance, but honest with my players around me and understanding what their strengths were too. I think, um, you know, as much as like some of these young ones coming through um, are really putting their foot down now, it's uh, longevity in the game is being able to work with the players around you and to win premierships. That's, that's key. So, um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to some of the youngsters coming through and seeing what they do in their second, third, and fourth year. Next game, we had the Swifts and the Magpies. Magpies were actually pretty competitive, like you said earlier, up until those last five minutes. Yeah, I thought they were um, really good in the first half in particular. You could see that they were shutting down the New South Wales Swifts um, centre pass set up in particular. I thought Braz was awesome on Haythamthwaite. Um, struggled probably a little bit more on Fraser, but there were some really beautiful matchups throughout the whole court. Um, you know, I think the origin match to match, um, our head to head was Nelson v. Clow, and that didn't disappoint at all. Again, a game of two halves for both players. So, yeah, I, it's really interesting. I've done three Collingwood games now, and I love 
Richo and Nicole Richardson, the coach. I love listening to her. I love her enthusiasm and passion for the team. Um, and you can see deep down she really cares for those players. So it's been really nice for me to see that side in the co- – I, I don't think I've seen that from a player looking, you know, into their um, little squad and into their inner, inner sanctum. Um, but, yeah, now that I get a little bit more of an inside scoop, it's really cool to watch. It's really interesting you mentioned that because I guess their club – along with the Giants and Lightning, was formed when SSN started. Now, I think most people could figure out or they could identify an identity that the Giants and the Lightning have currently and previously, but I don't reckon you would have been able to say an identifiable brand or style or club that Collingwood were. Would that be fair, you reckon? Yeah, I think so. And I think that's just, there's so many personnel that have changed within and out of that um, that squad. It's really quite interesting uh, seeing the ebb and flow of a, a team like Collingwood. They have so much promise. You know, you start off with a, a Nat Medhurst within that, that team. Anyone with a Nat Medhurst, I'm thinking, is winning a premiership. Like, she's so smart and is a game winner, a premiership winner to be completely honest with you and you know Jeeva down one end or Shani down one end or whoever is there you're just like man like they've got the goods and each year you're like I I can't write them off but then there was just something missing was it the coaching strategies I don't know I have no idea what it was however I feel like there's a spark there and although they lost on the weekend they did some brilliant stuff um, especially in that first half, attack was flying. They were just throwing it from everywhere. Um, and in defence, they were suffocating. So now I think um, for Richo as a coach, it's about being ahead of the game. In And as you know, when you're looking at coaches who do it so well, Nolene is the god, the, the dame of doing that. Like she, she can read the game before it even changes. Um, and she's already throwing players on before it even shifts momentum. So I think, um, you know, she's obviously had a lot of experience under her belt, but Supernet was a whole nother league, especially when you've got rolling subs and um, super shots and, you know, all of these um, extra additives to a game that um, is a little bit different to what you normally coach. So Shimona Nelson has, I guess, stepped up her game to another level. I'd say this year, especially the way she um, is taking the ball and her hands have become a lot more sturdy and safe. But it seemed to me during the game, obviously you mentioned the first half, they were throwing balls from everywhere. Do you think having such a tall shooter can sometimes be a detriment that you look at it as like a bailout option when you're struggling sometimes in that front third? You'll throw the ball expecting... You know, oh, Shimona's six foot, whatever. She'll take it anyway. And then if the defense has sort of tightened up, it's not as much of a sure thing as, you know, it could be. Yeah, it's it's it was quite interesting watching the two teams go about it completely differently because you have a look at a Sam Wallace who is so devastating down one end and Shimona who could be so devastating down the other. Um, Swifts don't feed the ball off the circle at the end. They work and work and work almost too much to get themselves into a position to make sure that feeds on. Whereas Collingwood and um, I think some, when I have a little thing in my ear when I'm commentating, I go to one uh, – here's inside scoop. I go to a, a huddle, one huddle, which yep. I went to the Swift's huddle, but I take my ear out because otherwise all I can hear is Richo in my ear talking and I can't hear what Bryony is saying. But apparently in one of the timeouts, she's like, just catch it and let it go. Just let go. Like, give it to her. But I think that's what was the downfall, right? Um, Shimona's hands were a little bit soft, yes. However, they weren't giving her time to set up. But it, the um, Swift's defenders had completely changed their setup. They were doing a split circle but hedging. So it looked really open at certain times. But then they almost closed in on her as she went up for the board. That's scary. Um and, you know, Annie Mitty that would put their hand up to pretend to be a shooter um, should feel like feel what it's like to try and catch those balls. So, yeah, I think the, the difference between the two teams is that Swifts were super patient, got it onto the circle, 
people was a sure thing that that ball was going in um, with no hands over, essentially, whereas uh, magpies were throwing it from everywhere, hands over. They're going over three or four defenders to get there. It's just too hard. Now, I want to try and start a nickname um, that wasn't coined by me. It was actually coined by my girlfriend, Maddie, while we were watching the Swifts Magpies game. Now, Mm -hmm. Maddie's favorite player is Helen Housby from the Swifts. Yeah. There was a point where Helen went off and hurt her hand or did something to her finger. And Maddie goes, Maddie goes, what's happened to Helen Hot Stuff? What are your thoughts on Helen Hot Stuff? (laughs) And then there was a moment where she came back on, scored a classic Helen Housby goal, and then she did a like her ponytail sassy goal attack flick. And I was like, Helen Hot Stuff is a pretty good nickname because she just has that attitude, like she owns the court kind of vibes. What are your thoughts? And she, um, well, she is hot stuff. Like, like actually physically and um, as a netball player, her her abilities out there is really cool. So I think it, I think it kind of suits her. Yeah. Honest, do you? But like, nice. Well done, Maddie. As a, as a guy, I don't want to, you know, own that nickname because I don't know. Can you say that? Can you not? I don't know what the rules are anymore. I just, uh, well, you know what yeah, I mean. I That's know. why you've endorsed it. <laughs> so it's fine. Endorsed by Kim Green. Can I tell you the Twitter Twitter fans? Oh, Netty Twitter, hey mate, crazy. It's been interesting, interesting day, I would say. Did you know how crazy netball Twitter was while you were a player? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So you, yeah. I've just recently joined this bandwagon. Yeah, um, I think the last couple of years, it's definitely. Um, I think the hub for everyone or COVID has really pushed people onto social media, um, having a little bit more voice. Um, and I think it's great. You know, you see the likes of some of um, the characters that you can see in the fans and the members that are now starting to create some really awesome content within Twitter. Um, uh, with that, for me, when I was a player, you often just got hate mail, really, to be honest with you. Um and it wasn't one that I loved being on Twitter because everyone sees it, right? Mm. Whereas if you get an Instagram, at least you can just delete it and just go, no one saw it. But when people can it's just open forum, um, it was like a forum, um, which can also get nasty sometimes. So, yeah, it was a really interesting one. Um, you know, looking at the last, uh, I know we'll probably touch on it with Joe Harden. Yeah, let's um, do that now. Yeah, that's a hard one, right? Like... Um, no one, no player, no, but no one in life deserves um, that sort of messages, especially when you're just trying to do your job. And um, unfortunately for this person um, who was, when I looked at it, a young girl, um, you know, this could also be a really hard time for her because I don't think she probably realised what she was doing or, um, you know, emotion gets the better of you and sometimes things just come out and, um, yeah, so it's a really tough one in the fact that, yes, we have to call it out, but I think we now need to just be like, okay, there's also someone behind that little phone that has said things that um, may need a little bit of support too. Uh, like I, I just found it a really hard position to sit in in the fact that hard no, you, you can't be sending those messages, the end, um, but let's just call it out and let it go. Like I am, my opinion. Yeah, I am glad that joe called it out because i think oh yeah i don't know what's what why netball doesn't get enough coverage but for whatever i don't think enough column inches enough time on radio enough anything to be honest but Mm. the fact that it takes something like this to draw attention to a negative out of the the game that was so amazing now this is almost Mm. half the, the talking point out of the game and it's just really disappointing that and i'm sure the girl that wrote the comment to joe is obviously a netball fan. Like, she was watching the game. So, it's yeah. just disappointing that we've got to do so much to get those column inches and to make noise for netball. And then one person, you know, has a bit of a brain fade. As you mentioned with Tilly Garrett, you know, going offside. This is kind of a supporter just having that brain fade. Exactly. Yeah. And, uh, like, I think, um, you know, if anyone was to do that whole thing again, I'm sure if they were behind that keyboard, they would regret totally. doing it so um definitely needs to be called out joe definitely did the right thing but i think we also need to be mindful of um 
the next part of that. And uh, you've seen it so many times when an athlete gets um, hate mail and then everyone goes after that person. So I th- like we can't just keep, no. you know, creating hate. Mm. So I think, yeah, it's just really important. Yes, call it out. It's not acceptable. Athletes won't accept it actually. Um, and I love that there is now a platform and people have the voice to do that because I, when I was in playing in my younger years, I was very scared of doing that for the backlash. Um, so yeah, I, I like, I like what's, what Joe's done there. Um, and now, okay, good. It froze. The, your zoom froze for a minute. You're back. You're back. Can you, oh. yeah, no, I'll sweet. I'll sweet. Um, something that I do love about obviously the socials as well is, um, I saw last night, or maybe it was this morning, Jamie Lee Price was jumping on Twitter and getting involved in where people were saying she was too physical and she was rough. And even Sue Gordian and Jamie Lee Price were literally having a, not a Twitter war, but like Sue, and she did on the commentary last night say... Clarifying. Yeah, clarifying what was said. And I really like that. And then Sue clarified... Uh, clue- Calm down. Sue said, <laughs> you did have a couple of brain fades in the... um second half that were obvious contacts and Jamie Lee was like, yep, mm. that was on me. That was my bad. I'd like that you get to know Jamie Lee and what, how she talks and the language she uses and getting to know the players a bit better. Yeah. And can I tell you, Jay um, is one fierce competitor on court, but she is like a little kitten off the court. Like Really? She is like a little rag doll that you pick up and just want to cuddle. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Would not hurt a flea. Um, she uh, flee or fly? Hard... Fly, flee, flee. <laughs> Isn't it? You wouldn't hurt a fly. Oh, I heard a flea. Maybe it's Sydney folk. <laughs> well, I was talking about kittens. So oh, okay. Yes, that that <laughs> clarification. Yes, lovely. <laughs> um, but she's the sweetest little thing, and um, yeah, and she. T- to be honest with you, like. She, you'd be running alongside her and then all of a sudden you might just move into her and get a hip of hers and you're caught. And you're like, Jay, you just hurt me. And she's like, I didn't move. And then you look at the footy and you're like, ma'am, she didn't move. Like, but I've got a cork for three weeks. She's so strong. Like the strongest player I've ever played against. Yeah. Um, and I think some players can play to that a little bit, just like what I was saying earlier. Um, you know, the more physical, strong fast, powerful athletes, you can get yourself into positions to make sure the umpire pulls them. Um, that's a smart player, a smart wing attack, and I think we're seeing a few of those at the moment. Um, but I like that she's been sticking up for herself um, and clarifying and having, um, yeah, just honest conversations with Sue as to, you know, well, I didn't think it was that. Maybe you maybe you didn't see everything that was happening on court because I was getting hit from behind or whatever she was saying. Um but yeah, like it's it's quite an interesting scope that you know, not often do players come out and go, hold on a second, like this is actually what happened. And I love that it, Jamie was like, re- it was literally a respectful conversation. It wasn't like I didn't mm. do that, you're wrong. It was. I think it's a lesson. Yeah. Like if you do want to tweet to a player, I'm sure they will respond if you're, um, you know, measured and and pretty fair in your initial tweet to them. Yeah, and I think the great thing about sport is that you can have opinions Mm. um and you can sit there and create some really cool content based on your opinions but i I think yeah what what i was when i was going to bed last night i was thinking to myself if you wouldn't say it to someone's face then just don't say it like if you can't have an honest conversation then don't say if that's not you that's not you but um yeah i think there's some i think yeah it's tough that this is onto um, mainstream media but yeah I I also love that players are now starting to stand up for themselves a little bit and showing character which we have forever and a day tried to put a lid on um, not not media but um, organizations in netball in particular have put quite the lid on that so oh, I'm okay. loving seeing personalities now what did you make of the game last night? Fever Giants, the one point. Did you think it was a hell ball by Joe at the end? Taking no, off your hell ball. Taking off your orange giants hat. No, obviously. No, and I like 
to be completely honest with you, I went to Twitter this morning with my thoughts, um, which some people didn't particularly like. Um, but That doesn't sound like Twitter. Are you sure? No, no. <laughs> but that's okay. I like it. I like the conversation. But I think it wasn't a held ball, but you've got to remember these umpires have probably all stayed on quarantine. Yeah. They're exhausted. They don't get looked after like players. Then they have to go into that stadium. No one can hear a thing. Like, to make a decision on the spot in that last second to win a game is tough. Um, wasn't a hell of a ball. But if we have a look at it, Giants had every opportunity yeah, to yeah. win that game. And what I said was they had one gain in defence and seven turnovers. You can't win a last quarter or win a game against a fever who are the best mm. at being able to score off turnovers. They're just like, you can't get the ball off them. They're amazing. Like Janelle Fowler is amazing. You can't give up that ball. So um, they had every opportunity and I'm sure they'll be kicking themselves. And that's probably something Julie would have said to them. And knowing being in that position before, that's exactly what Jules would have said. Now, speaking of Jules, I don't want to be controversial, but I want to put to you what I think everyone is thinking. Okay. Can we sort out the Giants coaching staff with better shirts than the ones they're currently wearing? (laughs) Because... They're not doing anyone any favours. You don't like them. Oh, Kim, come on. Come on. Shiny orange. The shiny orange is just not a... Shiny orange. I don't understand why... And like, I don't think it's a... Obviously, the, the coaching staff of uh, each club are all female. So, it's got nothing to do with, you know, picking on women's clothing. That's not what it is. Just those orange shirts are quite ugly. So, what would you dress them in? Yeah, that's a good question. If you're such a fashionista. Uh, well, I don't know if you've looked at my Instagram. It's not a good colour. No, it's a really hard colour to deal with. And I don't know if you've looked at my Instagram yet, Kim, but you need to because I am a fashionista okay. and I pride okay. myself. So, what I would like to volunteer to do, I'll take Julie shopping one day. We can go. We can find something that I think is more fun. If we can't find anything, why not just go with the you know charcoal and orange polo? Because I think Stacey Marinkovic is the only no, one that rolls with the no. team polo on the bench. No, no. <laughs> you can't be where. Okay, this is what happens in netball. Okay. You become a coach, here's a polo. No. What do you wear on the what? bench of your uh, Premier Is it Premier League? Is that what we call I, it in Sydney? Yeah, I've got a zip-up jacket and then I wear some black jeans and cool Adidas shoes. But you're not going to see Julie Fitzgerald in that. Do you roll your jeans up? Like two rolls? No, definitely not. I don't have I don't have small enough calves for that to be completely. <laughs> um, like you can't expect Jules, who's she is like a poised lady. Can I tell you, she's not going to be rocking around in a blazer like Firebirds. It's cool for them. It's cool for Collingwood. Jules is different. Okay, but do you think it's a nice orange blouse, or or do you think there is something that might be a bit? <laughs> I. <laughs> It's, I wouldn't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't, to be honest with you, I don't know what's out there. Yeah, okay. But also, you've got to also like pick something that's available gonna... and no one's putting orange out. Yeah, like, orange oh, is let's so... Let's do a line of orange blouses. I think that's a good choice. No one says that. No. I just want to make it clear that like, I'm just having a bit of fun. I, before <laughs> people at you me. You better make it clear. Yeah. <laughs> because people will be at you like, <laughs> Um. Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest issue is orange is a really hard color to find any clothes in. Full stop. Good on nails, but nothing else. Good on nails. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. I appreciate the feedback. <laughs> write that down. Yeah. Write that down. <laughs> um. Yeah. Pink's my go-to color. So I mean, the Thunderbirds. Okay. What did you think of all the indigenous dresses? Do you like them all? I love them. Love them. I. Which was your favorite? I just more oh, okay. Um, I love Thunderbirds. I love that the pink went to red. That's very cool. Love what are we ombre? I, is that what we call that ombre? That yeah, that was cool. Um, I always love the messaging around giants because I know the storyline. Um, and Crystal Dallinger, who is the designer, um, she has a storyline that goes with it, and each year it's something different and it brings in something else. So that's been really cool and consistent. Culture to Canvas, I believe, on Instagram. Yes. Yes, she is. And she's phenomenal. And I've just bought a big painting um, off her for like a transfer from Bathurst. I'm from 
Sutherland Shire, but with Lennon now being from Sutherland Shire and she's done this beautiful artwork that molds our family. So, um, yeah, so she's really, really uh, cool and she's been in the netball pathway and, um, yeah, it just really puts a lot of time and effort and I just love the consistency that the Giants have gone with with that one player as opposed to going to different artists each year. Yep. Um, I love Fevers. I'm loving Fevers Green at the moment. I think they're good choice, like Kermit Green, like that bright. Is it a lighter green yeah. than it has been previously? Whatever it is, I think it's better think, than what it was. Yeah, more fluoro or something. Yeah, okay. There's a bit more fluorescent in it. Um, so, yeah, to be honest with you, I, there wasn't one that I didn't like. I think they all had beautiful parts. Um, I love that Swifts did a circle for their um, bib. That was really cool. Um, but, yeah, I, I would say Thunderbirds colorings are always yeah. going to be good because pink for young females or, you know, I think that's a really cool color. Um, or males. But, yeah, I love – yes, or males, exactly. Um, or, you know, Lennon actually looks very good in salmon. That's his color. <laughs> so, <laughs> Mate, you mentioned that you, uh, you're you from the Sutherland Shire, Trent's from Bathurst. Yeah. So yeah. I'm trying to make a petition um, with Sam Pullman to bring back the Hunter Jagers, obviously to extend the SSN competition. Sam said she'd be happy to be assistant coach. Would you be interested in joining the Hunter Jagers when we get that going in the next couple of years? <sighs> Hunter Jagers. Maybe. <laughs> I, don't I, I, I don't know if I want to be a head coach. What? Why, did, why did Sam opt for the assistant coach? Well, she said there's too much pressure to be the, the main Correct. gal. Yeah. <laughs> Um, there's no winning as a head coach, nah. can I tell you, being on, um, being on a player's side and hearing players come to you with often feedback on everything. There's no winning. And then you got dickheads who have podcasts who criticize what you wear. So, I mean, you just can't win. <laughs> Correct. Like, who would want, like, it's blue and yellow. Like, is it the yellow blouse it's going to be or... <laughs> I don't know. I would hate for, you know, Tommy to come at me for what I'm wearing. Side note, I don't think blouse is a great word anyway. Like, you can't okay. win. You're wearing a blouse. Like, what even is that? Is a blouse just a top with no buttons? Um, I would say it's a more dressed up than a button up blouse. <laughs> but, like, am I, I'm, not, I'm wearing a shirt right now, but if this shirt yeah, I pulled over my head and it had no, like, if it, yeah. What's no, the difference between a t-shirt and a blouse? I don't know. Well, I feel like it's a bit more flowy blouse. <laughs> oh, mate. Canvasy that you've got on. Anyways, I, like maybe we need to Google that and put it across the screen as to what a blouse actually means. Oh, mate. <laughs> Kim Green, I've taken way too much of your time and now I'm just talking shit. So I will let you go. I'm sure <laughs> Lennon is, you know, he's needing you wherever he is. Um Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. I hope we can catch up again before the season is out. But Kim Green, thank you so much for your netball insights and your time. And thanks so much for having a chat. You're so welcome.